the Fun. mountains for more of that adventure just a little later in the show. But here at Randwick now, big crowd starting to come in. Lots of good bets, lots of colour. The fashions are all out. Uh, believe me, we really are giving you a huge coverage this afternoon. And, of course, a man who's more at home at the tote window than, I guess, up on top of a mountain is the Wizard of Odds himself, Kenny Callender. That's for sure, Max. I think I'd fall off. But uh, I won't fall off strategic. I want to be on him. I think he'll win. Here we go. Uh, the Canterbury Stakes for two-year-olds. have only uh, Most of these horses haven't raced. Bellatron tried well, but just a little bit easy on the tote now. Out to $4.20, $4.30 as I speak. Remember, this is for a dollar investment. Be Aware is out to $18. Exult, $81. $34 for number four. No, it's come in as I speak to $21. Falstaff. Fun Day is showing $51 out to $60. Jim Do from $21 out to $26. Number seven, Mount View, is showing at $51 now. Number eight, Respected, still showing $10. Odds of nine to one. Mick Dittman, the jockey there. Royal Royality is a, is a roughie at 100 to one. Rungstead showing $16. Uh, Rodney Quinn, it's one of the Ingham team. It's racing in the Cerise colours, trained by John Hawkes. Scoop the Poolers are scratching. Select star, Kevin Moses, out from uh, $21 to $26. Now, the lady who owns... This horse has told me that the correct pronunciation is Staranti. I was calling it Stranti, but I'll stand corrected. Staranti, TAB number 13, and it's showing $21. Strategic, still favoured on the tote. Another of the Johnny Hawks team racing in black and white colours, $2.30. Number 15, the groom is now out to $41. And Vernal, the third of the Johnny Hawks team, is tumbling a bit into $15. Reload was scratched this morning. What about tactics in a thousand metre race, particularly for young two-year-olds? Let's hear what Shane Dye's got to say. Race two over a thousand metres for two-year-olds. If you draw wide, it's near impossible to win from here, unless you've got a very, very smart two-year-old. You must draw an inside barrier and you must hunt them out of the gates and use all their speed. It's very rarely a two-year-old gets back and wins a race like this. Watch for the da Darren Beadman mount strategic. Drawn barrier six should win. Righto, Shane, I agree with you. He's my pick too, strategic. He went very well at the two-year-old trials, and I'm told that his work at Warwick Farm since indicated that he certainly knows what his four legs are all about now. Some of these babies just don't know what they're doing at the official two-year-old trials. They're all over the place, but Malcolm Johnston will testify to the fact that they can make terrific improvement once they've had a trial or two. Yep, Malcolm uh, with Ming Dynasty over there just didn't... Uh, Hear me mention that. I was just looking at the results of previous Canterbury Stakes. I noticed Malcolm won this race in 1989 on a horse called White Crest. Now he's um, coming up into line Select Star, waiting on Royal Reality and Vernal, still look to be about three out. Jim Dew has come up and stands well. They're having trouble with one uh, close to the inside here. One of them is Riders. Which one is this? I just can't pick up the saddle cloth number. Good hard, good hard to read there. Malcolm, what's that riderless one, me boy? So apparently, uh, Malcolm's having trouble hearing me over there at the starting point. So I think it might be number, is it number one saddle cloth? No, no, it's not. It's 15. It's the groom. Uh -huh. The wind uh, blowing that saddle cloth uh, upwards has just uh, obscured one of the numbers. The groom was the riderless one giving the trouble. So it's the Groom, Vernal and Royal Reality. They look to be the three we're waiting on. Breeze is fresh and just slightly at Randwick. But all in all, a gorgeous day for Epsom Day 1994. Now these uh, youngsters, uh, the adrenaline will be pumping for these young horses. Having had one or two barrier trials, they know what it's all about, although most of them are still not completely sure. Now starter Jim Bowles on this occasion is moving over. Strategic uh, drawn nicely in about gate six. Rungstead stands in well, so does Vernal. Jim Do. Staranti has the number one gate. Off and running now. Good start and away brilliantly is Strategic. Towards the outside, respected quickly into stride and so is Vernal. Showing plenty of early pace, Royal Reality and Falstaff is now driving through to join the leaders. But getting to the front at the, at the end of 200 metres, Strategic. Falstaff second and Balatron is now getting between that pair, followed by Be Aware. Exult is making ground along the fence, followed by Select Star and Royal Reality. A gap in the field then to Vernal, respected wide out.
is racing erratically, followed by Rungstead and then Jim Do, and well back the groom, followed by Staranti and Fun Day at last Mountview. Coming around the turn at the 400, Strategic is nursed up the rise by Beedman. He pinched a length on Balatron, followed by Exult, Falstaff, Vernal, and be aware, starting to run home well, but Strategic shot clear. Strategic dashed away past the 200, put about four lengths on Balatron, followed by Vernal and Exult, but this is going to bolt him. And Strategic going further ahead as they come to the line in the Canterbury, and he wins by six lengths. Vernal got second, Balatron third, followed by Exult, Rungstead, Fun Day, and then Falstaff and Select Star. Further back, Be Aware, then the Groom and Staranti, followed by respected Jim Do and Royal Reality, and Mount View is last in the Canterbury. An effortless win to Strategic number 14, going to pay $2 and $1.20. Second will be number 16, Vernal, to pay a place dividend of $2.80. And number one will be third, Balatron, to pay $1.80. Don't you love to see him win like that, Kenny? Yeah, I was surprised he wasn't odds on, John. He was the pick of the trials here in the uh, Randwick pre-season trials. His mother's by a golden slipper winner, Luskin Star, out of a golden slipper winner, Sweet Embrace. And uh, he's got golden slipper speed. Look at him go, and what a good jockey, Darren Beedman. God bless your little horsey. He's paid $2 even, as John told you, and there wasn't one moment's worry. What a smart youngster he is. He's the best horse I think we've seen, the best of the youngsters so far. Uh, and marie what do you think of uh, uh, Strategic? Oops, I thought Anne marie was here waiting along. That's the sort of horse we, we want, uh, Anne marie uh, oh, a youngster you? that wins like that. Well, I think Johnny Hawks will be very happy with that result, won't he? Well, I was just going to say to you, trained by an old uh, South Australian come okay. Melbourne man, Johnny Hawks. I think Johnny Hawks will be hoping that he carries it on with Tenor and the Epsom, and that's a very good chance. Well, this is a lead-in because I was just going to say you're going to have a chat with Johnny later on to see what he says about Tenor. I'm going to try and grab him in a very short moment. Good girl. Okay. And Marie Sparkman talking with me here on Epsom Day at Royal Renwick, and we'll be back shortly with more action on the wide world of sports. <laughs> Well, what a terrific uh, scene we've got here at uh, Royal Brandwick uh, as we look down the enclosure there, the member stand and the uh, horses have just come back to the uh, ring after that uh, race and uh, I think we've had some uh, reasonable results there because uh, the boys came up with a fairly big uh, winner there, Maxi Walker. Well, yes, there's no doubt about it. We got three winners in a row in race two. Um, fantastic performance strategic really doing a great job there let's now have a look at official divvies there uh, number 14 strategic played even two dollars and a dollar 20 number 16 second place two dollars 80 and number one balatron in third place one dollar 80 okay let's have a look at what our guest tips is look at that kenny calendar two out of two in the dollars mal two out of two mahatma well yes he gets some return there for his rupee rupees invested okay kenny calendar could you make it three out of three of course I can, Maxi Walker, and let's look at the early betting on uh, race three. And uh, it's a three-year-old sprint of 1,200 metres, and I'm going to back a horse that goes very fast. We'll get to him in a moment. Number one, Braces, is showing $10. Number two, Jarnane, is showing $8 exactly. Marseed, now this is the horse I'm putting my money on. Trained by Jack Denham, be ridden by Grant Cooksley. I think he'll lead all the way. I don't care if he doesn't win quite as easily as Strategic, as long as he wins. $2.70 he's paying. Stonebrook Meadow is showing $4.30. Irish Moss $11, Dry Humour $6, and Odessa $8.50. I'm going to back Marseed, another man who's in the money, Miracle Malcolm Johnston. Geez, Ken, I think I've got to agree with you again. That's unbelievable three times in a row, but I've done all my form before I got here. I reckon, yeah, you've, been, you... I reckon you've been ringing Equus and getting our tips. That's why you're going so good today. You rang up my wife, I know, and she <laughs> said, tell me what that bloke was saying in his sleep. Mate, I've got, I got to agree with you. I think Marseed's a very, very nice horse. Only comes out of Wednesday racing, but uh, just might be too strong, and if, you've got a, if you want a little each way one, the bottom one could run well, I guess. Can't have two picks. All right, I'll have one. I'll stick with you. OK, let's see what uh, my mate Mahatma's got to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Calendar. And I'm telling you, my first victory, 460 rupees. And I think I've come up with another one. Do you know, they always say the sign of a good horse is his teeth. Well, what better horse to back than braces? He's got very, very good teeth. I'm telling you what. I have also been down to the stables, and I have the good petrol that uh, this jockey, Mr. Evans, if he is not winning this race, they are going to hang him like a dead horse. I'm telling you what, he's going to be trying. Over to you, Mr. Walker. 
<laughs> well, mate, I think, yes, you can definitely pick a good horse by his teeth, Ken. It's all in the pedigree. Oh, I tell you what, he's brought a science to the racetrack today, hasn't he, Mahatma? <laughs> Under the turban, something quite <laughs> sensational. I'll say that. Now, many would say that the life has gone out of bookmaking and that the future doesn't look too bright. Well, one man trying to change that is Warren Woodcock, a real character on the course. Warren is a former Davis Cup team member who has turned to bookmaking. And as Andrew Voss discovered, he offers a lot more than just the prices. Welcome to Planet W, the creation of Sydney's most colourful bookmaker, Warren Woodcock. On Planet W, the most unusual thing, even losing can be fun. Thanks very much. Good luck. Besides fielding on every big meeting from the East Coast to the West, Warren has his own shop where you can buy a Planet W shirt or maybe a Planet W cap or even a Planet W pair of socks. And there's the added sweetener to back a few winners. If you back four winners, you get one of the staff shirts. And the three biscuits at the back, form guides, and all the results. Warren Woodcock only took up bookmaking at age 48. And ten years down the track, he reckons business couldn't be better, having brought his own style to Sydney racing. It's important to be a bit of a showman because people... Uh, I remember going to the Easter show and seeing Jimmy Sharman's tent, and that was as much entertainment and that made going to the show and I think that that horse racing should be like that because the people that should be going are those that are not necessarily studying the sitting up all night studying the form but there's plenty more chapters to the life story of Warren Woodcock his career as a pro tennis player in a golden era for the game alongside names such as Hode, Rosewall, Emerson and Laver. Warren you think back to these great days with the tennis um You'd like to put the bookmaking aside and wind the clock back? No, not really, Andrew. I, I love those days, of course, playing competitively, but I'm loving the bookmaking today. What about this one? I mean, this must be great to you to see playing Lou Hode and Ken Rose. Uh, yes, well, that, of course, uh, it's a great memory. You couldn't have played the two greatest young players in the world, so, so it was a thrill, and even a thrill to know them in later years as well. Is there something that you don't have many of these photos put up? Is that deliberate? Well, I, I think probably for young people today to come into the club, it probably bores them to look at the... they probably say, who the hell it was Hode or Rosewall? Which is sort of sad in its own way. And this photo, I guess, one of the proudest possessions. Well, this was the Australian Davis Cup squad of 57. Harry Hopman, of course, was the coach, a great man, and Rod Laver. You don't have to say any more about him. And Roy Emerson and Mal Anderson, the two Queenslanders. Ashley Cooper and Merv Rose, both from Victoria, and then myself and Bob Howe, who went to England and played so well in mixed doubles at Wimbledon. Can you believe that you've, that you've lived this life, that now you are a bookmaker? It does uh, this seem, is all before you? <laughs> Andrew, it does seem quite a long time ago, and is. And between the tennis and the bookmaking, Woodcock dabbled in harness racing. Following his life philosophy, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. Well, trotting was... Uh, a thing that I picked up in the States. I always loved horses, even as a kid. I, even when I traveled and played tennis, I always went to the race tracks of the world. I can remember going to, to Ascot and seeing Scobie Breezley riding. And uh, so trotting was a love, and I got the chance to buy a few horses. Had some money at that stage before I lost some of it at this damn bookmaking. But uh, uh, I bought some horses and then decided that I could drive equally as well as some of the people that were driving for me. It's easy to look at from the grandstand and think uh, you can do equally as well. I'm sure all punters see it that way. Woodcock has his swim and tennis camp in Sydney's eastern suburbs. And even on the court, the bookmaker shines through. One, two, three. Can I get, do I get a coach? You get, you get a, a T-shirt if you can hit triple ball. This is the tough one. Spending some time with Warren Woodcock is quite an experience, be it at home or at the track. Back on Planet W, it could well be the closest thing to punter's heaven. It sure is. It's for the smallest or the biggest. Yes, a man who knows how to enjoy himself, Warren Woodcock. Now, we trust you are enjoying our coverage of Epsom Day from Royal Ranwick. Since the saddle strat up, a little tighter, we'll be back with more in a moment.
good news. Well, there you are, all the cars aren't at Bathurst this weekend. Just some of the activity going on at Royal Randwick on Epsom Day 1994. Uh, under, of course, the Australian flag. And uh, horses will be uh, parading shortly for race three. As I said earlier, a 1,200 metre sprint for three-year-olds, in which I think Marseid will out-sprint his rivals. Here are the prices. Number one, braces are showing $10. Number two, Jarnane is showing a $9 return for a dollar investment. Marseid, favourite again, but it's not such a bad price. $2.50 for a dollar investment. $4.50 for Stonebrook Meadow, now trained by Clary Connors and will be ridden today by Mick Dittman. Irish Moss at $11. Dry Humour at $6.50. Odessa, who finished second to Marseid last start. Darren Biedman, the rider, well, he's showing $9. Here's Kenny Sutcliffe. Thank you, Ken Callender. Go Odessa. Today, we're putting $5,000 and some great... <laughs> Once again, we're back at Royal Randwick on Epsom Day and also the running today of the Champion Stakes, the Spring Champion Stakes. We just look at the runners going out for the third race in the program, leading the parade, TAB number one races, one of two runners from the powerful John Hawkes stable who won the previous race with Strategic. And as we look at the tote board, races is at uh, reasonably big odds in the field of seven, paying $10 for a dollar investment, and he'll probably get out even more. Jarnane from the Lee Friedman trained, one of the horses raced by Sheikh Rashid, who won a golden slipper two seasons ago with Bint Marsquet. It's showing $9.50. Marseid, raced by Mr. and Mrs. Beryl White, who have also won a golden slipper with Marseid Sire, Marsquet, and Marseid favoured on the tote into $2.40. Bookies are a little bit more generous and he might ease a bit on the tote before post time. Stonebrook Meadow, Mick Dittman's Mount, showing $4.50. Irish Moss, Malcolm Fitzgerald, $11 into $10 as I speak. He might get back, but he'll be running home powerfully. Dry humour, a nice youngster. Uh, looks an improver. Glenn Boss, the rider, out from $6.50 to $7. And the bottom one, Odessa, $8.50, back out to $9. Darren Biedman, who won the previous race uh, on Strategic, is riding Odessa. Time now to go back to Kenny Sutcliffe. Good on you, thank you, Ken. And given the fact that they rise early most mornings for track work and work most weekends, it's hard to believe that jockeys have time for any other leisure pursuits. But we've learned that you don't have to be as big and strong as Greg Norman to enjoy a round of golf. No, you certainly don't. We matched up the Aussie champs, Mick Dittman and Larry Olsen, against the Kiwi duo of Shane Dye and Jim Cassidy. The golfing prize was the inaugural Spring Carnival Trans-Tasman Trophy. Andrew Voss was there at the beautiful Terry Hills Golf and Country Club when they teed off. Shane Dye, the New Zealand of the Kiwi. Billy Idol, they call him. Four golden slippers to this fella. No slippers today. Just big golf boots to go stomping oh, in. Look at Billy, he's oh, pretty snapped. He turned it around the corner. Oh, hasn't he hit it? He's got some tricks. Look at that. Jimmy Cassidy, another Kiwi, New Zealander, they call him the pumper. Rode the great rough habit. Let's hope he's ironed out all of his today. Jeez, they're hard to beat, aren't they? Straight up the guts, the bludgers. Mick Dittman, the Australian, they call him the enforcer. And you're doing it for your country today, Mick. Let's hope you put some wit into those Kiwis. Even God can't get there. Larry Olsen, Australia, on Bundy late in the Epsom today. Let's hope he's not on the Bundy at the moment. Get off here, Larry. You're riding for the land of Oz, mate. Well, the Aussies are down there. Get it, oh, get it, oh, yes! What is he yes. doing? How are you giving him shots? 
What a great oh, three. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We're going pretty good. We've got the Australians off a bit, haven't we, James? Oh, mate, I was, I was just wondering whether their mics were on. I, I don't think you both could hear them talking. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the same on the track, the same rifle? Uh, well, Captain? <laughs> when you're in a race, it's got to be. That's our profession. When you're off the race course or in a jockey's room, it's not a... No, everyone's pretty relaxed and talks and, and has a bit of fun. It's a bit tricky. Hit knock the wood chip. We're normally riding on it, not hit knock it. Which is better? Beating, say, Mick in a photo finish or, uh, or beating him at golf? Oh, I prefer the photo finish. You get paid for that. The golf's nice, though. Oh, he's back. The boy's back. Oh, oh, there's no doubt about you, Mickey. I couldn't get there with a the cannon. Barry, is it easy to switch off from racing into, into the golfing mode? Yes, I find. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it's it's harder to concentrate on this, I think, than racing. Yeah. Oh. Jim Cassidy, Pumper said further down the fairway that you complain from ah. Gadaway. Well, you know, uh, these Kiwis, you can't give them too much start. Like, you know, as soon as he gets here, he says, I'm getting two off your boat. I said, <laughs> we're off the beat, eh? He said, no way. But we have some great fun for golf. Some good rivalry. Good yeah, challenge. Fun. Some money changes hands? Always. Well, most of the time, anyway. Could be in. It could be in. It's in. Oh! <laughs> focused where the boys uh, had a few lapses midway through but that was understandable the, the Kiwis put the pressure on from from the word you know what I believe it really was the age difference the two, point. walking the walking two, the two younger blokes playing the two uh, <laughs> the Aussie battlers the, the older brigade but and obvious with no uh, buggies today it might have just taken the toll maybe if they'd had buggies it might have been better for them. well Larry and Mickey can present the trophy to uh, trophy Jim to, and Shane trophy to the winners eh yep the Channel 9 Cup. Yeah, boys, I can't say it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, please accept them on our behalf. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bowie. Pleasure. Thank, thank you, Mick. Too good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for morning. Thanks, Thanks, and, uh, good on you, James. No, Thanks, done. partner. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Here we are, Billy. <laughs> Hold a lot. Once Kiwi again, Cup. the Kiwis were on top. <laughs> <laughs> that really hurt the Aussies. And Darrell Eastlake calling golf? What next? Bowls, maybe. I don't know. Right now, here's Angela Bell McSweeney with a special guest. With me right now, I have the lovely Kate Fisher. Kate's modelling career began when she was 13 and she won the Miss Dolly competition. In the last seven years, she's jetted all over the world and she's also an actress starring in Sirens with Elle McPherson. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Kate, tell me, how are you enjoying your first day at Royal Randwick? I'm very excited. I think everybody looks wonderful and um, I've never been to the races before, so I feel like a bit of a grown-up. Kate, tell me, who are your favourite designers? My favourite designers, well in Australia it would be Jane Lambert, who makes hats and she's wonderful, she made this one for me today. Um, Eddie Kazaz, who made this suit. Overseas would be Richard Tyler, who's um, an Australian designer who's doing very well, who we're all very proud of. Tell me, Kate, do you have a tip for our viewers today? Uh, March Hare. <laughs> March Hare in the Epsom. Mm. And one last question, what do you prefer doing? Your wonderful acting career or do you enjoy the modelling assignments? Uh, that's a very hard question. Um, both. Boring, I know, but both. Thanks, Kate. I hope you enjoy the day at Randwick. From the beauties to the beast, but we've got the uh, the tote prices. Number one, Brace is still showing $11. Number two, Janine at $10. Marseed, favourite on the tote, $2.60. Stonebrook Meadow, Mick Dittman's mount has firmed a little, and he can ride even better than he plays golf at $4.20. Irish Moss is still showing $10. Dry humour in from six fifty to almost six dollars, and Odessa paying nine dollars. A twelve hundred metre sprint. Shane dies the man for tactics as we look at Marseed behind the barrier. Here's Shane. Race three of the day, over twelve hundred metres, with only seven runners. Barriers are of little importance. It doesn't matter really where you're running in a twelve hundred metre race with seven runners. A horse called Mercedes, ridden by Grant Cooksley and trained by Jack Denham, has very got very good midweek form. He will race handy and will be hard to beat. 
Righto, Shane, thank you. Now, Irish Moss goes up to complete the line, and they look to be all set and ready for dispatch in race three. Starter onto his stand, and they're off and running. Good start towards the outside. Marcidi is away well, and uh, he's very keen to lead on that horse and is hunting him along in the early part to try and clear dry humour, who very easily gets into second place, running third, Odessa. Stonebrook Meadow is fourth near the fence, and then Jarnane, who's travelling three wide at the moment and being easing back a bit. About two and a half to Braces and two and a half to Irish Moss at the 800 mark, and Marcidi steadied, led by a half to dry humour. A length and a half to Stonebrook Meadow is actually pulling a bit in in third place and three quarters away Odessa one and a half to Braces followed by Jarnane and two and a half to Irish Moss to the turn Marcidi about a neck on dry humour one and a half Stonebrook Meadow on the inside of Odessa followed by Braces and Jarnane and Irish Moss has tailed off as they turn coming over the rise Marcidi the leader from dry humour on the outside Odessa hooked out running on strongly Stonebrook Meadow is immediately under pressure but dry humour grabs the lead dry humour headed Marcidi at the 200 mark Stonebrook Meadow two lengths away Away, not doing enough and dry humor has shot clear at the hundred mark stonebrook meadow running home gamely on the outside followed by marcidi but it's all dry humor he was a little bit easy in the market but didn't stop him winning easily stonebrook meadow second marcidi third followed by jarnane and then braces and odessa and irish moss is last of the seven yes he was very wobbly in the market uh, which worried me a little bit but it didn't worry dry humor number six Dry Humour's going to pay 660 and 320. The runner-up, number four, Stonebrook Meadow, 240, and there'll be no third tote. Again, there didn't seem to be a lot of money for the horse. No, John, uh, on the midweek form, uh, going on the horse he beat at Canterbury uh, Peralta, he couldn't possibly beat Marcidi, but he improved from run to run, whereas the favourite didn't, and the favourite raced a bit keenly early. Dry Humour always looked the winner in the run, and there he is in the Robert Sengster colours. Pretty smart horse. TAB number six by Danehill, the sire of Dan Zero. As we pick them up from this angle, he's already given Marcini the slip. Stonebrook Meadow, Mick Dittman in the yellow sleeves, makes a little bit of a belated charge, but he never troubled the winner at all. Dry humour first, Stonebrook Meadow gets up for second, and the favourite hangs on to what I think was a little bit of a disappointing third. Head on, that's the winner, three out from the rail in the blue sleeves and the white spotted cap. Uh, Marcidi, or Marcidi, whatever you like to call him, was in the white sleeves with the uh, grey stripes, but as they passed the post there, there was only one horse in it. Glenn Boss gives him a pat down the neck, and well he should, as the winner of a race on Epsom Handicap Day 1994. A short break, and then more from Royal Randall. site we've got there with the uh, Royal Randwicks look absolutely beautiful on this uh, Epson day and uh, boy oh boy have we got some great feature racing coming up for you right throughout the afternoon here's this first Saturday uh, in October let's have a look at the Debbie's race number three number six dry humor paid 660 and 320 number four Stonebrook uh, Meadow paid 240 and no Debbie for the third placed Marcidi okay let's have a look at how our guest tipsters went they've been going so well down the gurgler Kenny calendar Malcolm down the gurgler, three very good punters out of luck. Well, it's been a good start for Kenny Callender. Pick two, so two is Mal. Kenny, what have you got in the next? Yeah, well, Max, uh, it's not very flash odds. TAB number one, the brave, brave warrior, the Queenslander. It's a spring champion stakes for three-year-olds, but I think he's the best horse in the race, and I think you'll get the prize. Better a short-priced winner than a long-priced loser. He's showing $1.50. Dane win, ridden by the uh, Hong Kong jockey Jackie Chi. CK Chi is showing $5.50 for the win. Law of the Land is showing uh, around about $21. Stay tuned, Grant Cooksley at $18. Shystad from Melbourne is showing $21. Simulcast Mick Dittman's mount into about $7.50. Six and a half to one. Celtic Explosion, Darren Beedman at $31. Breathtaker at $41. And Glide Away at $34. Malcolm? You proved a mocker in the last race. You pulled me down, son. Well, actually, I'm not sticking with you anymore. That's it. You've had, you've had your chances. You've done all right early, but you've blown it on the last race. Uh, I think Brave Warrior is the best horse in the race, but uh, he's no value for mine, so I'm going for Dane Wynn. What do you think of uh, Jackie Chi, the Hong Kong rider? Well, if the horse is good enough, I think Jackie will win on it. So uh, he's a bit of value, and I'm having mine on him. 
Right out, I'm on Brave Warrior. Malcolm's on Dane Wynn with the Hong Kong jockey on top. Let's see what the Indian's doing. It's out to our friend Mahatma Kate. Thank you very much, Mr. Callender. Well, I'm out here with the Ferreta, Steve the Ferreta. And Steve, he puts the shoes on the horses. Who's got the fast shoes on, Steve? I reckon today it has to be that shoe stand. Shoe stand? There you 